Here we are. I want to show you guys something if you can see it. Can you see that? It says that it is 63 degrees in the sanctuary. You know what that means? They got the furnace lit yesterday. So the fellows are still down there hooking everything up. But um, the furnace is lit and the heat is on and they are preparing the water heater right now and finishing up some things and so on and so forth. So we are looking forward to getting back to normal by the end of this week. Certainly not normal this morning, probably not normal where you are, but we have nothing but ice over here. It's hard getting from the church to the house, but uh, I spent my morning uh, taking care of that, uh, taking care of Kelly, getting her off to work, which they went, you know, she still went into work, all of those things, and then uh, trying to do my best with snowblower and salt to try to maybe break into it, get ahead of it, that sort of thing, so it doesn't, you know, get to be a solid sheet of ice. So I hope you're safe where you are. Uh, Susie and I, come here, baby. Come here, Susie. There she is. Pastor Susie, come and give them some advice, Miss Susie. She says, be happy. She says to stay off the roads if you can and make sure that somebody is cuddling with you, right? <laughs> that's what she says because that's her whole life. So, yeah, but Norma, it's warm in the sanctuary. I mean, as warm as I make it, you know, during the week, it's 63 degrees, but look, you know, that was so nice yesterday when it came on. So I just wanted to share that with you. I hope that you are well. I hope that your week is going well. I have got a bunch of things to do today. Yet, um, I have a meeting, I guess, at one o'clock. That sort of is a surprise, but I'm going to try to fit that in. I need some, I need the music for the weekend. How about that? How about you guys help me out with the music for the weekend? Um, what kind of music should I have on Sunday? Now, I've got to sit down and I've got to uh, think about that and complete the service for the weekend and and that all of that. Also, I, you know, we're scheduled to have choir tonight. Um, we only have it now twice a month, so I'm hoping that somehow, some way, the temperature skies upward and it begins to rain. But every hour that passes, that's looking a little bit more and more unlikely. Hey, Tim, Kristen, I saw Norma, oh, Ali, I saw. I don't know if everybody's still on or not, but it's good to see you guys. And uh, I hope that you're doing well and staying safe. So <clears throat> that's where we are at the church. And there's where she's just paying attention to the uh, guys downstairs. She's licking my hand because I had uh, salted cashews. I had a handful of salted cashews. So evidently I will have to wash my hand before I get another handful of salted cashews. But she's digging what that tastes like. So, And she's hearing all the pipes. The guys are working on the pipes. And so there's noise everywhere in the church as they work on the pipes downstairs and it's freaking her out. So <clears throat> people off from school, all of that stuff. That's good too. So anyway, um, we had a great time yesterday. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to listen to the radio program that I've been involved in. But uh, we did our second sets of uh, recording yesterday, and it was really, really cool. Um, the more we involve ourselves in this topic, I mean, the more we realize that three 15-minute programs go by just like boom, and we've barely um, embraced the topic. Yesterday, when we were talking about, we were talking about how Christians are perceived, and we began with the idea that maybe Christians themselves perceive that they are perceived a certain way because we're very, very quick to be defensive. Oh, I'm being judged as a Christian. Oh, this is what you think of the stereotypical Christian. Oh, you're get piling on me because I'm a Christian. We've become very quick in that way 
So we, we fleshed that out a little bit and just trying to be self-aware as followers that we're not being overly sensitive. Because if you're not a Christian, if you're not a follower of Christ, then you don't know what it's like to be a follower of Christ. And you may say or do or assume things that just aren't true, but you don't mean any ill intent. It's what you've seen on TV or the movies or it's how your uncle Ronnie was, you know, that Christian guy or whatever. And now, so we talked a little bit about that. Then using that example, we talked about how perceptions are created of Christians. And of course, we know that Satan is hard at work creating the perceptions of Christians that fit his mold. So we can, we can, I mean, that's the overarching category, right? That all of this are lies from Satan that are trying to, you know, the, the, because I should say misperceptions of Christians, ill perceptions of Christmas, Christians, those sorts of things. And so we began to talk about that. And then Jeremy, the, my partner there, um, in this conversation brought up, hey, Stacy, brought up a, three points you know, three big things that, that are misperceptions of Christians. The way that the world and worldly people, so to speak, the culture, society in large, hate about Christians. One is judgmentalism. That's a complicated one. Um, because we are meant to judge. What? Yes, we are meant to judge. The Bible doesn't teach us not to judge. It, you know, the, the scripture in Matthew, judge not lest ye be judged. Matthew 7, judge not lest ye be judged. The, it, we need to read the rest of that. It says you can't judge somebody when you're involved in the same kind of swamp, you're living in the same kind of swamp that they are. Jesus says, don't judge from a holier than thou point of view. Of course, we're going to judge. But the Bible teaches us how to judge wisely. And how to judge with wisdom. So we, we talked about that. And, and so, yes, you say, oh, well, I'm not here to judge you. Well, we're going to judge you. We judge one another all the time. It's just a, it's a, it's a reaction. And you can't tell me that you don't. Right? Do you lock your doors at night? You're judging people. All right, so stop it. Don't lock your doors at night. No need to. Right? Don't assume that people are bad. It's horrible. No, that's wrong. We judge people all the time on large scales and small scales, all of those sorts of things. It's how we judge. And Jesus teaches us it's why we judge and how we judge and for what purpose do we judge. So the Bible teaches us about that because it's a lot more complicated. It's a lot more layered. It's a lot more nuanced than just judge or don't judge. That's where our human brains want to go because it's easy. It's easy. But can you imagine the natural logical consequences of judge not? I don't judge anybody. That, the logical consequences that, of that is anything goes. There's total chaos. You can't judge me. I am judging you. And so that with that language being co-opted by the culture, me just saying that. Wham! Gets a huge pushback, negative pushback. But what we as Christian leaders, especially and teachers, must do is look at scriptures like Matthew 7 and say, yeah, the Bible understands that we are judging. And the Bible provides wisdom for us as to why we're judging, how we judge, and for what purposes. I, there, there is no way, I mean, when, I, when I'm talking to an individual about about a sin issue, right? Why am I judging that? Because I love them and I don't want them to go to hell. How am I judging within the boundaries of the context of that sin and how it relates to their relationship with Christ and their eternal salvation, as well as how it is relating now into their earthly relationships? And to what end? To resolve it. And how will I know that it's resolved as a friend looking at from the outside in? I will look and see and I will judge again. You see how that works? 
So it is more complicated. It's messier. We, we talked on Monday night in our Bible reading project, um, understanding that, you know, God created quite a, or we created quite a mess here. Creation is quite a mess at this point in time. But that's where ministry is. That's why there is ministry. To get through the mess. Come here, Pastor Susie. You can do it. Come on. Come on. Get up here. <laughs> Come on. All right, you lazy bum. I'm getting you spoiled. So anyway, that's where we are with all of that. So we talked about judgment and, of course, hypocrisy. Um, the thing is, the thing, you know, all Christians are hypocrites because we're all doing the same nasty as everybody else, only we're on a hilltop proclaiming how nasty it is to other people. Um, and sometimes that is true. There is no doubt. But that is where the stereotype comes from. Thank you. Or thank you, national or global fallen leaders. Um, but it's also something that is, again, a very an issue of there is sort of an inherent hypocrisy, if you will. Because we're called to be holy. We're, we're brought into a right relationship with, G, with God through Jesus Christ. His righteousness is imparted upon us. But yet, like I said, we still live in that swamp. Um, there, are, there are going to be issues in my life. There are going to be thoughts. There are going to be feelings. There are going to be behaviors that I will backslide and go against and, and, and rebuke and, and, and live against that holiness and that holy calling. Um, so it is something, again, that's not made easy for us. Hypocrite, not hypocrite. Holy, not holy, period. That's it. Or all Christians are hypocrites. All... The one thing that we can do, again, talking about the complexity of all of this, is be open, in open conversation about what it is to be a follower of Christ, to have a redeemed nature, to embrace the calling to be holy, uh, which means set apart, which means different, which means embracing the, the lordship of Jesus Christ, um, and then living it in this in enemy territory, living it in this fallen world. And we can be open about that. We can talk about that. All of the good things, all of the bad things, all of the challenges, all of the triumphs. You know, We can uh, let people see as followers of Christ, what it looks like to put one foot in front of the other every day. And no, I'm not a devout hypocrite. I just fail sometimes. And, I, and, and the truth is, I don't want to fail. But I do. Does that make sense? The only way to, under, to break that stereotype, the only way to go on the other side of that, is to, is to live it transparently. This is appropriate, of course. In this community that we call church, understanding that this is part of the complexity of this relationship. Another thing that we can do is be true to our word. I know that the single most outstanding trait that people want from spiritual leaders is authenticity. Overwhelmingly. You can set aside being a good speaker or a good preacher or a good counselor or a good whatever. People want to know that you're the real deal. People want to know that you have a real relationship with Christ and that you walk every day in it just like them or just like they're trying. Does that make sense? I think that there's a great deal of respect in that and it lifts that veil and allows people to see the simple Christian life in all of its complexity, in all of its layers, in all of its nuances, in what it looks like in marriage, and what it looks like in work, and what it looks like in friendship, and what it looks like when you're trying to help a non-Christian brother or sister, what it looks like when you're trying to help a Christian brother or sister, what it looks like when you're in community, in church, and what it looks like when you're out what it looks like in good times and what it looks like in bad times, what it looks like in rich times and what it looks like in poor times, all of the above. That makes sense to me. 
That makes sense to me, right? What do the young folks say? One of the young hip ministry saying, let's do life together. I don't like that saying. It just sounds weird. But I get the, I get the idea of it, right? I've always said that if you're preaching, if you're, the, uh, if you're a part of a church in which you cannot turn around and look at your brothers and sisters in the congregation and ask those hard questions, then I don't think that the church, the unity, the power of the Holy Spirit is what it needs to be. Church isn't something that is done to you. You don't go in and watch the show, which unfortunately is the paradigm. It is the format. It is the structure that so much of church is based on now. We are the professionals. We are the choir. We are the worship team. We are the worship band. Come in and see the show. This is what religion is, and we'll tell you what it is. This is what relationship with Christ is, and we'll show you what it is. This is the word of God, and we'll tell you what it means. Right? Church isn't something that is done to you. Church is something that you, in which you in, 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 into which you invest. Church is something in which you engage. The people of the church are people whom you have chosen to invest in and engage with. And the leadership thereof should be promulgating that, should be nurturing that. Well, we can't. We've got 12,000 people. Yeah. Maybe you should have come up. Maybe you should have created uh, 12 churches instead of one. So, just thoughts. Just thoughts. I haven't read any of the comments. I've been talking about that. I mean, it's fascinating to sit there with Jeremy and we talk for 45 minutes or so beforehand. And then we just begin to talk with the microphones in front of us. And so... Um, it's it's really really neat thing to do. See, I judge so I have good gossip to spread. Amen to that, right? So, um, Jesse Allen, hey buddy. Yeah, work beside me, with me, not above me. Right, right. Leadership, leadership in what? Leadership to me means fostering the environment in which people can become or engage in or be better at or understand better or their relationship with Jesus Christ, period. It's not how many ministries I can direct. It's not how many mission trips I can take. I'm called to make disciples and, and church is called to make disciples and iron is called to sharpen iron. Right? And deep is called to speak the deep. When you have that issue, who can you turn to? So, I'll go to the counseling department. Okay? So anyway, there we are. Pastor Susie and I, lunchtime. I'm going to wait again to clean the church. Now, tomorrow I won't be around at all. I have commission work in the morning, and I have Scotland work in the evening. So um, it won't be around at all tomorrow. It's booked. But Friday, I'll be back. Um, I'm glad that we got an opportunity to talk today. Like I said, there was just a compilation of snow and ice and making sure that everybody was safe. Also, talking with the Shipley people who are finishing up the job. We had a slight issue with the hot water that we had to resolve and those sorts of things. So that's all taken care of. I hear them cutting through something right now. And I'm just anticipating when it's all finished and all and that stuff. But it's so nice to be back into a sanctuary with just a little sweater on. And I can't wait to fire that puppy up and, uh, and have the whole church toasty warm. So that's it. That's lunchtime at Churchtown with Brian and Pastor Brian and Pastor Susie. She's here if you never need to talk to her. Um, just uh, give her a call. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
but we're in good shape here. I appreciate you uh, engaging in this. As always, you can share it if you would like to share it. It'll come out on YouTube and you can engage in our YouTube channel, all of those different things so that we can keep the conversation going because that's where ministry happens, right? It happens in the conversation. It happens in the mess. None of us, only one, Jesus, the Christ of God, is risen above the mess. And then he comes back in us, in the power of the Holy Spirit, and engages in this big mess with us. So that's how it happens. That's what it's all about. It is hard. It is complicated. There are no stereotypes. Uh, get in there and do the work, all right? Get in there and do the work, in Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Hey, 6.05 tonight, 91.3 FM. Check it out. Let me know what you think. On here, ask questions, um, and we'll keep the conversation going. So God bless you guys. Thank you. I love you, and have a fantastic, wonderful Wednesday.